We do have our first caller now. I believe that's uh, Susie from Calhoun County. Go ahead with your question, please. Yes, what I'm wondering, I'm a homeowner and I rent out the home. I have several renters, actually. One of mine recently, uh, I think, acquired one of the pit bull type dogs. Am I going to be liable if that dog bites someone or is it just going to be the person living there that the dog belongs to? That's a that's an excellent question because I know there's a lot of people that that mm -hmm. rent homes and and um, you know the the answer to that question is you could be absolutely mm -hmm. now the, you're not going to be strictly liable right. the owner of the dog is the only one that can be strictly liable but you as a landlord if you have knowledge that this dog is kept on your property and you allow it to be kept there it's you're well within your right to say this dog has to be in a fence. This dog has to be on a leash. You can't, you're being the reasonable property owner for these people if you're gonna allow pets um, and you allow them to be there. Um, as long as you're taking reasonable steps, you should be pretty well protected. But if you allow what you know to be a dangerous dog to exist on your property, this dog maybe has a history of biting people, aggressive behavior. Is it maintained? Is it, you know, are they, are they keeping it in an enclosure? Are they keeping the dog on a leash? Those are the types of things that if you know that they're not doing those things, then you as a property owner, that mm -hmm. is, that's really kind of the definition of right. negligence. I know they're doing something, I have control to keep them from doing these things and I'm not doing anything about it. Um, right. So I think as long as she's, as, as Susan's taking reasonable steps, taking reasonable steps then, then you're probably gonna be okay. But yeah, it, it really becomes fact specific, you could be liable if you know depending on what right. level of and knowledge there, and, you have and there's and, and look as the depending on the, the terms of your lease you can you can prohibit pets if that's sure. your, if you so choose and you also can require that that uh, renter have renter's insurance that could uh, right. lame you as an additional insured as well so there's protection if god forbid something happens because um, as i know my mother-in-law loves to ask me can i sue for this can i sue for that well whether they're right or wrong you can potentially get sued for sure. it and one of the biggest expenses that you can have is defending yourself so it's very very important to have that insurance policy that not only will pay out any legitimate claims but it will also pay for an attorney to defend you. So that right. would be an important requirement that I would strongly consider um, having that as a requirement as part of your lease. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great piece of advice. If you rent your property to other people, require them to carry renter's insurance and require them to have you named as an additional insured under their policy. That way you get that legal protection. Right. So, um, you know, that, that's, you know, you, you got the, the rental properties as well. You want to make sure um, if you have secondary, third properties, you're looking at what insurance coverages you have on those, getting back to what we were discussing earlier right. on the, the homeowner's claims, uh, because these aren't things that you look at until, until usually until happens. something's happened. Right. So you want to know what you have. Um, and, you know, you know, look, I, I'm of the mindset, especially after having gone through Hurricane Michael, I'm typically typically going to be one of the individuals that's going to evacuate if something's coming close to us. Yeah. Um, but you need to make sure and understand your responsibilities as a property owner with respect to making sure you can't, you know, you, you got to weatherproof your house as good as you can before you leave and you want and you have an obligation to mitigate any damages that come to your house. So, that's for right. example, if you have damages to your roof, you need to get that thing tarped as soon as reasonably possible right. so that you can make sure that the damages don't get any worse or you get into a situation where the insurance company can potentially try to minimize how much they have to pay you for not taking care of your property. Right, and, and there's, there's actually, there's things you can do before the storm is coming during this, this preparation week we're gonna be having mm -hmm. is, uh, is, you know, we're talking about uh, storm proofing your house. Les, before we took a break there, we were talking about some of your obligations as a, as a right. insured. Right, well, you, you brought up mitigating your damages, which you know, mitigation of damages is one of the things that your insurance policy requires. So if you have damage to your home, you lose part of your roof, you get a big hole, something comes through the window. Uh, the, the way you mitigate is by protecting the remainder of your property and your house to, you know, for being damaged further by more water coming in. So tarping the roof, right. boarding up the window, doing things like that. But there's also some things you can do before the storm hits. And, and I'm thinking um, a lot of the damage that we saw caused um, in hurricanes or tornadoes is when items get picked up and thrown around. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, take an opportunity this week to go around your backyard, if you have uh, patio furniture, you have pool furniture, picnic tables, umbrellas, 
Um, anything that might be picked up and thrown across uh, mm -hmm. the yard or up against somebody's house or through somebody's window, those are things that you're going to want to you know, bring inside, put them in your garage, bring them close to your house, or just try to keep them away from, from uh, you know, from open areas where right. they could be picked up and thrown and around. It, and, and, and also, you know, uh, trees, tree I was limbs. Say, if you didn't take care of some of those trees yeah. after the hurricane, yeah, if you, you got know, time this week, that you, would be a perfect if you, opportunity. If, if you've got some trees that look like they may be falling or that right. need to be trimmed, um, either you can do it or God's going to do it for you. All right. So, well, you know.